So today, we're going to look at how to build a 404 error block that is responsive across desktop and mobile using our horizontal resizing properties in collaboration with our modes. It will also be complete with all of the associated properties so you can customize it as you see fit. The reason being uh, is I have been seeing a lot of this with the introduction of modes where a designer is building two different breakpoints, one for desktop, maybe another for tablet or for mobile. And despite having all of the right variables, everything you would need to make it responsive with Figma's new features post config 2023, sometimes the text isn't always responsive. So we're going to look at how to avoid this case that you see right here to make sure that our text stays responsive across different modes. Let's dive in. All right, so let's start adding our texts. Let's go with a 404 error. Uh, our body medium is just fine. And let's change this to our text disabled just because I like that lighter gray color. And next, let's add a heading. So let's make it fun. Let's say, dude, where is my page? A little bit geeky, but that's okay. We're going to set this to our text information. And let's set this to our heading. Let's go large. Dude, where is my page? And next, let's add uh, a little bit of description text, letting them know what's going on. So let's set this to our, let's just change the uh, heading large to our body medium. And let's change this to our text body and let's start populating here so let's go with a you've landed where you shouldn't be shouldn't be shouldn't be something like that beautiful next let's go ahead and bring in uh, a button and if you haven't yet built this button link will be in the description on how to do so and let's copy it oops excuse me not sure what happened there and let's copy another version and let's call this, just put this to our transparent. And let's set the label to return home on this one and the label on this one to report it. So maybe it's the first time this error has occurred. Uh, give the user the option to report that they are receiving an error. So now let's start cleaning this up and adding some auto layout. So I'm going to start off by selecting our buttons, right click and add our auto layouts. Let's apply a variable uh, to our gap and let's just set that to maybe extra small and let's call these buttons. Next, let's do the same for all of our texts. Let's add our auto layouts. Same thing, apply a variable. Let's go with a gap of eight and let's call this our text block. And now let's select uh, all of our items, right click. Oops, this looks a little bit lower than it should. Let's maybe just adjust that for now. And let's right click, add our auto layout on both of them. And let's again, let's apply a variable. Let's go with 16. And let's call this our uh, error block. And let's create the part of this. There we go. So now let's uh, take a look at a couple of things here. So say I want to change the text. You landed where you shouldn't be. Don't be alarmed. So when I added more text, you'll notice that what actually happened is it bled into our gap. So what we need to do there is set the uh, resizing property to hug and hug. And let's just do the same hug and hug. And let's set this to hug and hug. So it gets nice and snug. And that should have adjusted, carried forward to our uh, symbol. And I can see that that did. Uh, one other thing as well is let's also add a nested instance on our main component, because again, I've lost the properties to actually change uh, our button. So let's open up our properties, nested instances, and toggle that on for both of our buttons. And there I see the properties. But we're not done just yet with the properties. Uh, we want the ability to easily toggle on and off all of our text here and then change it as well. So let's start adding uh, our layer and content properties, starting with our error label. Error labels. So that's a layer property. So I can see that I can toggle that on and off. And because we're using auto layout, I can see that that adjusts nicely. And next, let's add a content property. 
So error label. <coughs> and we can't have two properties with the same name. So I like to do is offer a little differentiation with a downward arrow, which I got by pressing edit and then emojis and symbols on a Mac. So now I can see, I can toggle on and off that error label and then change it as well. Test, beautiful. Let's do the same for our heading. Layer property for a heading. And then a content property as well. Heading. Create that. Heading, and I can change that text. And I can see that because we set uh, the vertical resizing to hug, it adjusts nicely. So let's just undo that. And let's do the same for our description. So layer property, description. And then let's add the content property, description. Arrow. There we go. Description, and that changes. And heading, and then error label, and we still have the properties for buttons. Beautiful. So next, let's look at adding these to our frames. So now let's work on making this error block responsive based on two different modes. So let's start off and add our let's add a MacBook Air frame, and let's also add an iPhone. There we go. And now let's add uh, one variable in two modes and apply that variable to our error block. So let's open up our local variables. Let's create a variable, number variable, uh, that we'll call error block. Let's add another mode. So this will be our mobile. Oops, mobile. And for uh, the variable, which will be the width of this error block on desktop, let's set it to 650. And on mobile, which will be the width of this error block on mobile, let's set that to 300. So we've got our two frames, so our desktop and our mobile. Now what we want to do is make sure that we apply that variable to our the main component of our error block so that when this error block is in each of these different modes, Figma will know which modes it's referring to and then set the width of this error block accordingly. So on our main component, so not the symbol, the main component itself, let's apply a variable, which will be our error block. And I can see that when I did that, it took the width of our first mode, which is totally fine. So let's drag this in to uh, our desktop and let's make sure that Figma knows that uh, this frame will be mode one. So let's make sure that's set to desktop and let's do the same for our mobile. So I can see here that this is still at the width of 650. It's because Figma does not know that this frame is our uh, mobile mode. So let's set that mobile. And I can see that that adjusted nicely. So at first glance, you would think it already is responsive, but let's dive deeper. So I see here that we have our frame, which is 300 pixels, which we go back to our local variables, should be the width of our error block on mobile. However, if we look closely, is the text actually extends beyond it. So it might appear responsive, but it really isn't responsive based on the variables that we've set. And even on desktop as well, sure, it looks just fine, but our container is set to 650, but our text isn't fitting, isn't taking the full width of that container. And that's because there's something wrong with our main component. So let me bring our main component over to the right-hand side and let's make some adjustments here. So and I, the reason I brought it over uh, to our mobile is because it's easier to see the changes in real time. So again, we can see here that the text is extending beyond uh, the edge of our uh, container. So what we need to do is make some adjustments to the horizontal resizing. So let's select uh, our text block, set that to fill, the horizontal resizing to fill. 
And then let's select the individual text elements and set all those to fill. Now pay cl close attention to what happens when I do that on the mobile screen. Set that to fill. And I can see that that heading text now collapsed. So it took the width of the container instead of extending beyond it. Let's do the same for our text. Let's do the same for this as well. And on the desktop as well, I can see that each of these text elements are now taking the full width that we set our local variable to earlier on in the lesson. So now our heading is set to 650. So is our description. And so is a little error message as well, all set to 650. So now let's uh, do a quick check. Don't be alarmed. This happens all the time. Set that on our mobile. Again, this is the beauty uh, of adding properties and why I added properties uh, earlier on in the lesson so we can make these changes on the fly. And I can see that even when I add more text, it still fits uh, the width of our container that we set uh, via our local variables. So I hope that provides uh, a good explanation as to why using modes does not automatically make things responsive is you do need to become more familiar with your horizontal and vertical resizing properties, your auto layout and more. And this is your friendly reminder to sign up for uicollective.co for all our design system and Figma training and more. Uh, we have our design system coming soon, so be sure to join the waitlist for that. It's the best design system you'll ever download bar none, and you'll get access to sweet free templates like the ARC token map as shown in the video. Hope to see you online.